Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 4, Ecosystem Dynamics. This is video number 6 and we're going to be looking in this video at extinction events. Our goal for this particular video is to be able to explain a recent extinction event and I think um, the interpretation of recent is going to be one of our uh, interesting points here. Recent has very different meanings, uh, particularly when we're applying it to the geological time scale. So let's have a look at some extinction events in general and uh, see if we can explain a recent one in particular. So what you're looking at is being able to name a recent extinction event to identify a possible cause or multiple causes for a named extinction event and then to see if you can explain the circumstances which may have led uh, to a recent extinction event. So there's a couple of different levels there for you to have a look at in terms of where you want to try and um, aim at the end of not just this video, but also this little section of work. So before we launch into extinction events, I think one of the important things that we need to look at is ecological principle number five. And ecological principle number five states that there's a background of normal, uh, sorry, there is a pattern of normal or background extinction that happens without any broad scale cause. Um, this is a really important point uh, because we talk about extinction a lot. We also talk about it in terms of the disastrous way that it can um, wipe out uh, large numbers of different organisms. And probably um, the word extinction makes most people think about dinosaurs. It's, it's probably the one, it's not the, the most significant extinction event in the fossil record, but it's certainly the one that's the most um, popular or well-known but extinction is something that's happening all the time. And there's, um, it's important that we're aware of this pattern of normal or background extinction that happens uh, without it being attributable to any uh, major change in the climate, any major change in human activity or anything else that may be occurring, volcanic eruptions, asteroid impacts, all of those sorts of things. So sometimes we're not looking for a disastrous or major cause for an extinction, sometimes we're analysing them on a slightly smaller scale. And so I think one of the most important things is to realise that extinctions happen a lot. And the fossil record identifies some fairly significant extinctions. And if you look at the uh, Cretaceous tertiary boundary, this is the extinction uh, when the dinosaurs disappeared from the fossil record. Uh, and so it's the one that people I guess, are most familiar with and, and can talk about uh, the best. But it's not the most significant uh, extinction event. This extinction event here between the Permian and Triassic, something we might have a look at and explore in a little bit of detail, it was a major extinction event and a huge number of species disappeared from the fossil record never to return after that particular event. What we're going to do is we're going to focus in on a more minor but more recent. And this is when I, when I initially introduced you to this idea of explaining a recent extinction event. The, the actual term recent is one that um, could you regard the extinction of the dinosaurs as a recent event? Well, it was about 65 million years ago. And in a geological time scale that goes um, down to about four and a half billion years, 65 million isn't that much, um, but certainly in our way of describing things, we would not describe something that happened 65 million years ago necessarily as recent. Um, so I think there's some interpretation to do here, and certainly I think any extinction event that you can explore and see if you can try and tease out uh, information from is going to be very important. Of course, when we're looking at extinction events, uh, the primary thing we do is we focus on the cause. What do we think it was that contributed to this, this massive extinction event? This is about past environments. And of course, past environments is something that we're going to be looking at next. So this is a little segue between what we've started to look at in systems, ecosystems that we understand, some of the dynamic principles that occur when we analyse ecosystems that we're living with and a part of, and how we can apply our knowledge to past events and also uh, whether there's a predictive value in trying to look at, at potential changes in the future. So extinction is one of these areas where we try and gather some information 
from what's happened in the past, see if there's any um, parallels, anything in the present that we can use to help us inform what happened in the past um, and see if we can make some, some uh, intelligent comments about that. So let's look at one uh, recent extinction event in a little more detail. The one that's most relevant, I think, to us in Australia is the extinction of the Australian megafauna. Now, we have looked before at the, at the megafauna, the, the fact that there's such a huge diversity of large animals um, that were part of the Australian ecosystem or, or the many Australian ecosystems uh, for some period of time. But in about the last 50,000 or so years, we've lost them. This fellow here, the marsupial lion, Thylaco leo, um, so many of these different types of um, large marsupials just appeared to, to, well, they've disappeared from the fossil record. And certainly we don't see them around now. And even um, organisms that are more recent, like the thylacine, um, can be used to help us to try and um, get a sense of what sort of factors may have contributed to the extinction of these giant animals. There's probably two major schools of thought. And again, the important thing, I think, when you're, when you're looking at extinction events is the idea of um, uh, cause and evidence. So what is your um, proposal in terms of what you think might have caused this, this major change in the Australian fauna? And what evidence is there to suggest that this is the case? Now, while I want to set up uh, an, a, a little opportunity for you in class to have a look at extinction in a little bit more detail, one of the things that we do want to do is to start to look at the big issues that maybe uh, have contributed significantly uh, in this particular extinction event. And the t I guess the two main causes we want to investigate are climate change and human activity. The more information that we're gaining tells us that the, um, the indigenous population, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people reached Australia a long time ago. Um, exactly how long ago keeps being pushed back. We've had 40,000 years, 50, 60,000 years, maybe it's even 100,000 years ago. Um, evidence continues to be found all the time. And of course, that should always inform our position. We should always be open to um, interpretations and reinterpretations of uh, sites that have been found and excavated that tell us something about the human population that was living in Australia and also for how long it's been here. But, uh, and, and if the human activity exists at a time that overlaps with megafauna, then it may well be that there was a contribution that humans made, particularly in areas like uh, management of fire. The Aboriginal people um, have a very effective way of managing um, their ecosystems with the use of fire. And we know that the Australian flora in particular has responded very well in terms of adaptation um, to fairly regular fire. But human activity may not be the cause or the sole reason for the extinction of the megafauna. There may also have been changes in climate. And in actual fact, we know about drift. We know that Australia has been constantly drifting uh, north, away from that Gondwanan group, and most recently away from Antarctica. We also know that as it's drifted, we have had a change in the climate, particularly uh, in terms of aridity. So the climate has become drier. Um, and as a result of that, that particularly affects, um, that sort of change particularly affects the flora. It particularly affects the producers or the plants. But the plants are food for the consumers. So therefore we know that there's going to be um, some roll on flow on effects. When we looked at biotic factors, we know that those um, biological organisms in any ecosystem are influenced by abiotic factors, such as um, temperature change, absolute temperatures, um, seasonal temperatures, rainfall, availability of, of important gases and nutrients and water and so on. 
So usually the extinction story is not an easy one, and we need to have a look at a, a, a few different lines of evidence in order for us to build a picture of what we think may have been the contributing or major cause to the extinction of the Australian megafauna. But that's an activity for class. So thanks for watching.